Oh, it just did it. Do you hear that? It just went up to 16,000 again. Earlier today, I realized that my heat pump slash air conditioner had stopped working. The interesting thing is, I didn't actually realize it in the normal way where you see your temperatures creeping up and up and up. It was actually through the Sense Energy Monitor app and it was super useful to basically have a notification that alarmed me to some really abnormal electrical patterns. So I'm gonna show you the footage from earlier today when we went through the troubleshooting process of figuring out what was going on. And at the end of the video, as a bonus, what? we're gonna actually measure capacitor volts on this particular unit so you guys can have a better understanding of what capacitor volts are. All right, let's go back to a couple hours ago and I'll show you guys what happened. Just noticed something super weird on my Sense Energy Monitor. We're getting these energy usage spikes. So you can see there's one right here, 16,000. Then it drops back down, 2,300 watts. The only thing I can think of that would cause this would possibly be locked rotor amps on the air conditioner. Because right now, we're supposed to be operating and we're 76 in here. Thermostat set to 75. We might have a bad compressor on the heat pump out there or possibly just like a bad capacitor. So would that be the HVAC guy not having air conditioning in his own house? Yeah, but that's not my On fault. the hottest days of summer. Exactly, I mean, not, <laughs> maybe. I can hear that the fan is running, but the compressor is not running. So that means that for sure, what we were looking at is locked rotor amps here. Oh, it just did it. Do you hear that? It just went up to 16,000 again for just a moment. Let's go ahead and turn this guy off and we'll flip that over and leave that in the off position and then we'll pull the cover and see what's going on inside the side cover here is yeah uh the compressor is not starting for sure so isn't it cool i figured it out without having to look at it from the sense energy monitor app actually that is pretty cool but that might say more about your smarts than the sense but <laughs> i don't know uh, but either way, we have no air conditioning right now. But we do have lots of beef ribs, so life is still fine. And cold, fresh pineapple, and the kids are setting up the kiddie pool, so we'll be just fine. It feels so nice outside. We just so happen to be defrosting the freezer in the basement, and so that's how we found this old stuff. So we'll see if the 2018 ribs uh, actually taste good or not. <laughs> that's actually kind of a long time ago. I'm not going to think about that. Uh, but anyway, I brought these ice packs in here because I was like, ooh, heat absorption capability. So we're not going to let this thaw out outside. Uh, we're going to let this thaw out in here because this is going to help keep our ambient temperature down just a little bit <laughs> during the uh, heat pump repair. So stay tuned to find out whether or not we uh, are going to melt for the next I, month. I, I know I'm not. You might. Uh-huh. But is that pool pass starting to sound better? No. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Hey look, it's when we did our cabinets a long time ago. If you want a review on how 2018 beef ribs taste, you have to stay all the way to the end of the video. All right, let's get this thing opened up and see what we've got going on. Right now the power is turned off to just the outside unit. So I would actually expect that the contactor would still be engaged in here because it's still receiving a call for cooling from the HVAC equipment inside. Based on the serial number, this equipment was manufactured about 10 years ago. So it's getting up there in age a little bit. All right, let's see what we got going on. Contactor is still pulled in. Right there, you can see that the contactor is closed. And the same thing would be true on the bottom here. You can see both sides of it. If the contacts looked significantly burned, it might be cause for concern. But since the fan was running and it was actually trying to start, I really don't suspect that it would be the contactor. But what we're gonna do now is test the actual capacitor here. This is two capacitors in one or a dual capacitor because it's designed to be both for the fan and for the compressor. This terminal right here is labeled fan. This one over here with the two wires on it is common. So that is gonna be the power coming into the capacitor. And then finally where the yellow wire is, that's the herm. So that's the wire that goes to our compressor. In order to test this, we could remove the fan and the herm, or we could remove both of the common wires. I think we're gonna remove the fan and the herm in this case. We've got our electrical tester, volts alternating current. We're just gonna verify that we don't have any power coming into the unit, which we do not. And then let's just check right here to see if there's any voltage showing on the capacitor. There is not, but we'll go ahead and short out the terminals on top of the capacitor anyway, because it's best practice. So we're just gonna take the metal part of our screwdriver and just kind of short it out between these different leads on top of here. 
to ensure that we don't have any built up electrical charge in that capacitor. We'll go ahead and pull off the wire that's for our fan. This one in theory might be fine. Since this is a dual capacitor, it's got two different capacitors built into it. I'm guessing it's just mostly a cost saving measure. Sometimes you'll see a unit that has a separate capacitor for the compressor and for the fan. We'll switch our electrical tester into capacitance mode. This will actually sense without me having to change anything it should be able to determine what we're doing. And we'll go from our common right here. It doesn't matter if you use the black or the red probe to the fan. And we'll see what this measures. You can see it's not measuring anything. And now let's check from the common to the herm or the compressor. So we're gonna pull off that second wire over there. And 48 MFD. So it appears that the compressor one is actually still working. The fan one is not working. But let's pull this thing out and see what it's rated for. It looks like it's probably a 45.5 would be my guess. But we gotta pull this capacitor out to see exactly what it's rated for. Let's take a look at the side of this. Should tell us the exact specs. And I was right, it is a 45.5. So that's actually not a super great sign. This thing should have been starting it up according to the tester. When we tested it from the common to the herm, we were getting that 47, which is within tolerance. Test it one more time just to be extra sure. 48. And nothing on the fan. So that's kind of interesting because the fan was still working, the compressor was not. So the fact that this capacitor is testing out correctly is not a great sign. It means most likely we have an issue with the actual compressor. But the fact that the fan is not showing correctly gives me a tiny bit of hope in that it's somehow still the capacitor. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go get a new capacitor, install that, and then that will be our final determination. We're gonna try to start this thing one more time before we go put a new capacitor in. I've got this rigged up here so we can measure how many amps this thing draws. I'm expecting somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 amps at that 240 volts. Here we go. Oh, 78, 77 amps, just briefly. It actually went over 100 for a second, didn't it? That's pretty insane. So the compressor is definitely not starting on this thing and it's really a bummer since the capacitor seems to be testing out fine for the compressor side. If the capacitor is bad and your compressor is not starting, it's you know 95% chance gonna be the capacitor. But when your capacitor tests out fine like this one did, it's more likely that you're actually gonna have a bad compressor with a locked rotor. We're gonna go ahead and get a new capacitor in here. So I will link in the description to different capacitors if you guys are running into the same issue. But the main things to pay attention to are your rating of your capacitor, in this case it's a 45.5 UF, plus or minus 5%, uh, but 45.5 meaning 45 MFD for the capacitor, 5 MFD for the fan. And then over here we've got our voltage rating. Now if you have a capacitor that has a 440 volt rating, you need to replace it with one that has a 440 volt rating. But one thing you can do depending on the situation is if you have a 370 volt capacitor, which honestly most of them are, then you can actually replace that with a 440. So you can replace a 370 with a 440 but if you have a 440, you need to go back with a 440. It's just the capacitor voltage. While this thing is running, you can actually measure the volts. Let's go grab a new capacitor from the shop and hopefully bring it back to life. All right, I'm back. We have started working on the beef ribs. I'm not sure why I'm recording right now. Hi, Letta. Hi. Do you want to see yourself? Ready, watch. Oh, is that you? <laughs> That's a letter. Say bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, a quick run to the shop. I've got my replacement capacitor. You can see we've got the same specs, 45.5, 440, or 370 volt. So this is the one we're gonna be installing here. It's a little bit shorter, it looks like, but otherwise the same specs. It's uh, pretty common for them to be a different shape. So if yours comes and it is a different shape, don't worry about it too much. So yeah. We'll get this switched out here. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do before that though is I'm going to make sure our power is disconnected. Our disconnect is still turned off and we'll take our screwdriver and just short between these terminals on top of the old 
capacitor again. I can also cross from here to the frame of the air conditioner and nothing should happen. Obviously our power is off, but when you're crossing terminals like this, you should always close your eyes or be wearing safety glasses or something because if it does have a spark of some kind, you don't want those sparks going in your eyes. Now we're just gonna move our uh, wires over one at a time. So we'll start with the Herm, which is yellow in this case, and we'll find the Herm on our new capacitor. Slide that on there. And then our fan, which goes to our fan terminal right there. And then we've got our two wires that go to our common. One of these will be coming from the contactor and the other one is going to probably the fan motor, I believe. A lot of times they'll pull power for the fan motor from the common terminal on top of the capacitor. All right, our replacement connections are done. I think we'll go ahead and just anchor this back up in place because I know the capacitor is good now. So we'll go ahead and get it up here. I'm gonna move this one to the back actually. If the new capacitor doesn't do it, we are gonna be installing a super boost or a hard start kit and this potentially could make it go. Usually it doesn't, probably nine times out of 10 it doesn't, but every once in a while uh, it might just do the trick. All right, there we go. So we are ready to go ahead and put our disconnect back in and see if this thing is gonna fire up or not. The contactor should already be pulled in, which it is. So I know that it's gonna try to start right away. We'll orient our disconnect in such a way that it is in the on position, and then we'll push that back into the disconnect. Here we go. All right. <laughs> That is a beautiful sound. I don't know if you guys recognize that or not, but the compressor did start up just like we had hoped that it would, but I honestly didn't think it was going to because of the capacitor testing out fine. So that's kind of an interesting scenario for you guys. Even if your capacitor seems to be testing out fine, it might still be bad. And obviously we had the giveaway of the the fan not actually working on it. So there's our old capacitor that was no good. And our new one did the trick. And we're drawing right at about nine amps almost, it looks like. 8.8, or 8.8 .8 amps at, let's see how many volts we've got coming in here. 248.6, okay. So 248.6 times 8.9 amps equals 2,212 watts of electricity that we're using on our heat pump. Now going into the Sense Energy Monitor app, we should be able to see under devices which things are running. And you can see that our heat pump is drawing 2,442 watts. So a little discrepancy, but it's possible that the Sense Energy Monitor is also including some usage from the other portions of the HVAC system. It might not be a bad idea to go ahead and pick up an extra capacitor. These things are, I don't know, probably the most likely thing to fail. They only cost like less than 20 bucks. So I will link to a bunch of different ones, like the most common ones, like the 45.5, 35.5, 35, 45, and uh, all the 440 volt ones. There's really no other physical signs of failure with this like a lot of times the top right here will bulge out when they start to fail because it has a safety component basically that keeps it from exploding essentially. I wonder if this little button right here, no, I don't think so. So the short ribs, these are those beef ribs in progress. I'm searing them and then they're going to go in the crock pot here for six or eight hours, so we'll give you a final report later on. If any of you guys are interested in picking up a Sense Energy Monitor, I have a $25 off coupon code in the description. My Sense Energy Monitor is located in this panel right here, and that allows us to monitor all of the energy usage on the entire property, going both to the house and the garage and the shed. So check out that link if you guys are interested. Now let's get back to the video. Right here I have proof of how optimistic I was about getting that heat pump going. We've got a portable air conditioner, and another portable air conditioner that I picked up while I went and got the capacitor. But I guess I'll have to go put these back into storage again, thankfully, and uh, don't have to use them this time. It's never a bad idea to have some kind of a backup plan, just in case things don't go quite like you had hoped. Let's go ahead and measure those capacitor volts like I promised. So I'm gonna turn the air conditioner on. Now all we have to do is take the probes of our electrical tester. As long as your tester is able to handle the voltage range, this is fine to go up to 600 volts. And we're gonna measure between the yellow wire, which is our Herm, 
and the common back there which has the purple and red. Right there you can see we're at 363 capacitor volts on the compressor side. So it's kind of interesting if we only had a 370 volt capacitor in the short term I would be fine putting a 370 volt capacitor in. Either way you want to go back with the size that was originally there. So now let's measure between the fan and the common. And right there you can see we're at 360 volts on the fan side of the capacitor. So, what's the final diagnosis? Well, <laughs> do you notice the air conditioning is running or not? Well, I mean the fan's been running, right? I can't say I realized that the air conditioning was fixed, no, but... Okay. Yep, it's fixed. It was the capacitor. Even though the capacitor was testing mm. out fine, kind of, which is weird. So Can't I haven't had it feel like that very many times. Oh, that was a really fast fix. Yeah. We prayed for that. Exactly, guys. It's supper. We prayed it would just be a really easy and fast fix. Oh, yeah. It was. Ellie, what did it taste like? What does the meat taste like? Is it good? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Oli, what did you think of the ribs? Jay, do you like the ribs? All right. We ended up having to move them to the larger slow cooker because the small one was just like totally overloaded. But we've got grilled asparagus that was freshly picked, some potato salad, and then our beef ribs. This recipe was really simple. There wasn't like a ton of like barbecue sauce in it. We're adding the barbecue sauce after the fact. And actually this stuff is absolutely superb and not nearly as bad as it sounds eating something that was originally frozen in 2018. Amelia, have you tried the beef ribs yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you think? They're very good. It kind of just seems like a roast, doesn't it? It kind of does, but I haven't tried it with this yet. I love so. the sticky fat. I don't have a fork. Here, the this sticky fat? Right what is that? Is that? Like chewy parts of the ribs. It's like oh. sticky. Wait, is this the good? I thought that was it's like a, sweet a jab against my ribs. <laughs> a jab in my ribs. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.